Uh, welcome again to day two of the National Water Sanitation and Hygiene Conclave 2022. You are currently in Hall uh, Narmada. So Ramya, we can leave, right? Uh, yes, sir. yes. The previous panelists can leave now. And yeah, you're currently in Hall Narmada. The focus discussion in this session now will be on repair and retrofitting of sanitation infrastructure for sustainable sanitation challenges and solutions for PRIs. And the moderators for this session, we have Mr. B. R. Raman and Ms. Amolia Miryala, both are from WaterAid India. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Raman. Mr. Raman is a public policy and systems expert with close to three decades of experience uh, in multiple development sectors such as wash, health, nutrition, and education. Until recently, Raman held, a, uh, he held the head of policy portfolio at uh, WaterAid India. And he currently works as a policy advisor at WaterAid. Uh, Ms. Amulia is an engineer turned a policy and governance ent enthusiast. She currently leads sanitation related policy and technical support work at WaterAid India's country office in Delhi, where she works primarily focused on flood surge management in urban and rural areas, grey water management, and health, safety, and dignity of sanitation workers. Uh, now, at this time, I would like to hand it over to Ms. Amulya and Mr. Raman and introduce the speakers and moderate the session. Over to you. Thank you. You're on mute. All right. So I hope uh, you have added us as uh, co-hosts also. Uh, thanks, uh, Gita, and uh, uh, all uh, you know people who are assembled here. And uh, you know because uh, the previous session was on water, and we are entering into sanitation. I'm seeing that there is a transition of people happening, and at this point, our uh, audience uh, base uh, is yet to come. So that is one uh, you know kind of issue that we are going to face. So people are uh, take going to take a little more time. It looks like. Uh, but I would request the conference, uh, Gita and the team to, uh, you know, announce in the main lobby that the water sessions are starting now and people can join uh, this, uh, you know, hall. So, yes. them coming. <clears throat> so, so, just for your information, this is Virgilal. Uh, just for your information, the participants are streaming live in the uh, uh, hall there. So, they won't be joining the Zoom platform. Okay, they will not be joining. Yes. Okay, great, great, great. All right. So that that makes uh, more sense. Uh, so, <clears throat> all right. So hello, everyone. And uh, thanks for uh, joining us. We don't know how many of you are there and, uh, uh, you know, uh, what kind of uh, interests uh, you have. But on the other hand, I'm happy that uh, our uh, facilitation support team uh, will be helping us with your questions and all that. So this particular agenda it's a very important uh, you know, uh, issue as far as the Swachh Bharat mission and the sanitation uh, related relation to environment health is concerned and public health is concerned. So how toilet infrastructure, the substructure is contributing to water quality and the superstructure is contributing to the usage. These two are together, uh, you know, will uh, the, the, the superstructure can lead to uh, non-usage and the, the uh, and ODF and the substructure issues can lead to water contamination. So addressing both of them uh, is a very, very important uh, issue. So that is where retrofitting and repair has come into as a major agenda of the Swachh Bharat Mission uh, 2.0. Uh, so we have here, uh, you know, an opportunity to see this from the Panchayat lens. Uh, what the Panchayat need to know about this issue? What all are the key things that uh, they need to take care about while implementing this issue? What all are the challenges that can come? what kind of solutions are available. So we will be getting into this discussion uh, with uh, you know three states experience we'll be having. So the session will be in two uh, parts. Uh, three states, uh, Orissa, Bihar, and Rajasthan uh, will tell us uh, you know, how they address different issues around. So Orissa, for example, has issued, you know, addressed the financing and Bihar has issued uh, uh, a, a helpline process for people to report and uh, then respond back through an accountable uh, toilet clinic uh, initiative, wherein you know Rajasthan has gone into a larger capacity building measure and also terra inappropriate uh, uh, technology solution. So we'll listen to these three, and also there is a video about how Chhattisgarh went into making toilet infrastructure, specifically superstructure, accessible. 
so these four experiences together will take our 20 to 25 minutes. And uh, uh, then we will go into a discussion with experts, uh, wherein the experts will, uh, based on their own experience of uh, addressing environmental as well as uh, public health issues around sanitation, uh, and how they made it terrain appropriate, how they made it ecologically sustainable, how they made it usable, and uh, how the panchayats and wh what the panchayats has to learn from those experiences and how the panchayats can go into in terms of financial, in terms of technical, and in terms of administrative uh, processes in this. So uh, 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 with this, you know, let me very quickly introduce uh, my panel. Many of them who also ever is working on the sanitation uh, issues are uh, quite, uh, you know, familiar with all these people, I'm sure. So I have, uh, you know, uh, my co-moderator Amulya has already been uh, introduced to so Prabhakar Sinha is here. Mr. Prabhakar Sinha works as the watch specialist in UNICEF. He has a long experience, uh, not only with UNICEF, but with various uh, technical partners and all, and has worked on this issue uh, quite consistently uh, for changing the uh, sanitation related issues uh, with governments over a long time. Welcome uh, Prabhakar Sinha. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we have uh, Rishabh Himani and uh, Mr. TK Das, Tapan Das. Uh, both of them and also, uh, you know, yeah, <clears throat> both of them are coming from Rajasthan. Uh, Rishabh is the UNICEF uh, wash specialist in Rajasthan and has been helping the Rajasthan government uh, uh, <clears throat> across uh, uh, capacity building issues and terrain appropriate toilet technologies issues. And uh, also he has a long history of working on the uh, environmental sanitation issues. Welcome, Rishabh. <clears throat> And we have TK Das uh, in Haryana and in Rajasthan in various states. Uh, when we are talking about retrofitting, one of the technical hands uh, and the name that is coming to people's mind is uh, Das. So Das is also here. Mr. Das, welcome to you uh, for you know uh, uh, for this uh, uh, in, in this session. And we have uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't see him now. And Narendra Singh Chauhan is here, uh, who is uh, the wash officer uh, with the uh, Odisha. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, UNICEF, and he has been helping uh, with in partnership with Water.org and uh, uh, other organizations. He has been helping the Orissa government to make a financing solution at the community level for uh, you know addressing retrofitting related financial needs, which is a very important lesson for uh, you know uh, uh, knowing and also for replicating. Uh, welcome, uh, Narendra. <clears throat> and then uh, we have. Uh, uh, for the panel, I'll, I'll introduce our panel, but I'll just take them through. Uh, one is Eklavya Prasad, quite familiar name across, uh, you know, the issue of uh, uh, water sanitation, Make Paine Abhiyan in Bihar is quite well known. Uh, Eklavya has been uh, instrumental in uh, solving many of the problems uh, related to retrofitting through ecological sanitation. Eklavya, welcome to this uh, session and uh, you know the solutions that you are going to offer are going to be quite interesting and uh, useful for the panchayats. Uh, we have VG Gobinathan from uh, the Integrated Rural Technology Center of the Kerala Shastra Sahitya Parishad in Kerala. Uh, the, for the Kerala terrain, they have uh, you know contributed a lot by way of uh, you know introducing alternative technologies uh, to to contain the uh, bacteriological contamination and all that uh, vg welcome to you <clears throat> and we have uh, uh, miss ruhil ayer ruhil ayer is the research officer with the ids sussex in uh, uttar pradesh uh, uh, with the unops uh, they have done a, uh, the idea Sussex sanitation knowledge hub has done a joint initiative and you know uh, Rugil has led the documentation of that so the work is uh, of the ground level but the knowledge and uh, uh, evidence has been consolidated so Rugil is representing two phases here UNOPS and uh, uh, IDS sanitation knowledge hub welcome to you Rugil. <clears throat> And we have uh, you know, two government officials who are about to join, uh, the Commissioner of Rural Development Bihar, Mr. Balmurugan, and uh, uh, Secretary and uh, uh, you know, uh, long-term leader of the SPM in Rajasthan, Mr. P.C. Kishan. Both of them are not able to join, but we have Ajit Tiwari. Uh, we will have, I don't think he has yet joined. I'm, I'm not able, able to see him. Ajit Tiwari is the Joint Commissioner, Rural Development and Panchayat Raj in Madhya Pradesh and has been instrumental in shaping the SBM 1.0 and also have done a massive 80 lakh uh, household level survey to understand the problems and gaps uh, around the Swachh Bharat mission and then to take uh, solutions uh, uh, and to design solutions towards that. So we will have a lot of experiences to uh, hear from him. And uh, uh, finally, we have 
Farad Choudhury from the Rajasthan uh, government. He is an officer on special duty and manager of the SBMG uh, uh, Rajasthan. So this is the both of them are about to join at the end of the sessions. Uh, they will be able to join us. So this is the structure. So now let me. Uh, we are already running little uh, late. So let me uh, take uh, request Prabhakar to very quickly taking uh, six to seven minutes to tell us about how Bihar, uh, you know, thought about the toilet clinic. And uh, initiative and uh, how panchayats can uh, take learnings from and cue from that uh, towards uh, scaling up and replicating across Bihar and outside Bihar. Thank you, Raman. And uh, thanks to the organizer for providing me this opportunity to share my learning experiences from uh, Bihar. Um, see, we, we all know, uh, I need to share my screen, Amulya. I have been disabled to share my screen. All right. If you could just start, I'll share the screen in a minute. Okay. So we all know that uh, since 2014, with the launch of SBM Phase One, uh, Bihar, uh, UP, in fact, the entire India has done a remarkable job in providing safe sanitation to its population, and uh, we have uh, constructed more than 109 million. Uh, okay. The, now, can you can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Let me put it on the presentation mode. So we have uh, seen around 109 million toilets being constructed and being used uh, across the country. Even in Bihar, we saw that around uh, more than 16 million toilets were constructed. So in all, around 6, 600,000 uh, panchayat uh, villages were made ODF. I think it's still on the presentation mode. Is it in the presentation mode? Uh, Prabhakarji, I am presenting it for you. No, presentation okay. mode, please put it on full screen. It is not yet. It is on full screen. Okay, it is not showing here. Anyway, continue, please. Okay, fine. So, uh, but, uh, uh, okay, fine. Okay, so uh, with, with construction of these toilets, another problem which came up, although we had achieved that milestone, but the challenge was there of ensuring that the toilets are functional and they are uh, used uh, uh, over the period of time so that uh, it can provide the required benefit. Um, and, and we realized that even uh, so these many toilets were constructed, uh, still NFHS maintained that uh, uh, around 65% uh, of rural India, only 65% of rural India had access to safe sanitation. And for Bihar, this was even lesser at around 45%, uh, 46%. So uh, while the new toilets were being constructed, there was a challenge to ensure that the old toilets are functional and being used. Uh, so uh, parallelly, we, we conducted a couple of studies. Uh, UNICEF conducted a couple of studies. What I heard has also conducted several studies and some other agencies have conducted those studies. So we realized that there are challenges. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Because I am okay. Are you able to see the presentation? Because I am not able to see the presentation. Well, it's fine. Uh, instead of sharing just the PPT, please share your entire screen so that when you go to full screen mode, also it's visible. Yeah. So uh, perhaps it's okay. Like because I have my presentation here. Uh, anyways, so we realized that uh, despite the toilets were constructed because they were constructed in a haste, there were some many many technical challenges with those toilets. Uh, there were many single leach pit toilets. The leach pits were dug too deep. Uh, there was very um, like minimum distance between two leach pits. The pits were very close to the drinking water sources. Y junctions were missing. And likewise, there may have many technical anomalies uh, that needed uh, retrofitting, that needed redressal so that to ensure that the toilets are functional. Uh, realizing this, we, we also uh, reached out to, uh, we, we conducted a retrofitting campaign uh, in, uh, in, in December, in November, December 2019, uh, 2021, in uh, three districts of Bihar. And we spoke to the villagers and we realized that uh, people were not very uh, uh, comfortable or perhaps they had the myth and misconception about the retrofitting challenges. Uh, they were not uh, aware that even uh, the, the, the challenges can be addressed with the minimum um, investment of 30 rupees, 50 rupees, 100 rupees, 200 rupees, 500 rupees, and max two to 3,000 rupees. So 
uh, while we realized that we 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 understood that perhaps there is some uh, reason, some some uh, requirement, uh, some uh, thing is required to be um, uh, done. If you can see the uh, structures also, yeah, maybe go, we can. We realized that almost seventy percent of the toilets were unsafe. Uh, if you go to the next uh, slide, uh, we have some pics uh, which show the super structures. Next, uh, then the platforms. So you can see the superstructures. These, these are after the construction uh, and perhaps uh, affected by floods also because Bihar has a very peculiar situation of uh, flood affected districts, high water table districts, and even uh, uh, rocky terrain with water scarcity districts. So these are the superstructures which were uh, damaged as a result of floods. If we go to the next slide, we can see the platforms. Uh, which required retrofitting over the period of time. Uh, further down, we can go to the substructures. Next uh, slide. So the substructures, the pits uh, were inundated. They were submerged. They were filled. They were collapsed. All sort of challenges were there. Uh, next. So all these issues highlighted that, okay, there is some need to address uh, the retrofitting issues, uh, the address the cleaning, disinfection, and maintenance of toilet issues. Uh, and we realized that funds were available. If we talk of the institutional toilet, especially for CSCs, Panchat had uh, uh, 15, friends in, uh, 15 Friends Commission uh, money. For institution school toilets, uh, composite grants were there. But that money was not being used because of lack of uh, trained human resources. And there was a gap between the, those trained human resources who were working. and and the, 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 the right holders or perhaps the institutions or the families which required the services. Uh, there were uh, a couple of people uh, who were working in, these, uh, in this uh, area, but they were working in a very unhygienic and unsafe manner. Uh, and we realized that there were health hazards and safety issues for the, these service providers. And of course, there was social stigma and discrimination attached to that. So this gave birth to the idea of toilet leaks. Next, please. <clears throat> If we see that uh, the toilet board coalition has estimated that the cleaning services of public facilities, this market has a huge potential to the tune of 27,443 million US dollars. And even for Bihar, we estimated that uh, for the schools, colleges, healthcare facilities, and CSCs only, uh, this comes to around 20, more than 20,000 uh, uh, lakh per annum, for ONM only. So there's a huge potential for these services. And this toilet clinic perhaps is a solution for that which we initiated, uh, which provides the hardware and hygiene supplies. So it can provide the services, including the pipes, uh, the pans, the traps. So it has linkages with the sanitary hardware uh, agencies. It has trained masons who will provide services for ret retrofitting, construction of toilets, uh, construction of new toilets, construction of uh, bathrooms, et cetera. Then we have trained sanitation janitors, uh, which will do the cleaning and disinfection of uh, both the household toilets and the uh, community and institutional toilets. And of course, engaging the hurry suckers to provide safe services. Next. So the first uh, such toilet came up in, in, in Muzaffarpur district of Bihar on 29th November, which was inaugurated by Honorable CM. And a team of mason sanitation janitors were trained and they were uh, placed there. And the best thing is that uh, these sanitation janitors have been tagged with CSCs and institutions. Uh, like we did uh, uh, earlier trainings in Gaya and Purnia also, but Muzaffarpur took a lead and they have tagged the CSC. So every sanitation janitor mm -hmm. has assured income and the rates have also been fixed. So now the state is going to take it up to, the, uh, to all the districts. Initially, we are focusing on five districts, uh, Darbanga, Madhubani, Sopal, uh, Sihor, Sitamani, and Muzaffarpur. And the resource is being put by UNICEF, government, and the partners. Next, please. Yeah, Prabhakar, we will have to stop now. And if you can, yeah, this particular point serving panchayats, if you can conclude. Yes. So now the panchayats have the facility because they have the funds also, and they have the facility to access these toilet clinics for services of masons, for services of sanitation janitors, and even wash credit is available for retrofitting and construction of new toilets and bathrooms. But these services are uh, available on payment basis both for the institutions, the individuals, and for the panchayats. So that's it. And if you go uh, to the next slide, perhaps it will show you 
uh, quick result in terms of uh, uh, action. Yeah. So these are sanitation generators. These are the before after pics of the toilets which have been retrofitted in last one and a half months time. And uh, that's it, Darbhanga, uh, Shihar, Madhubani and uh, Muzaffarpur. So Thanks. that's from my side. Thank you so much. Thanks, Prabhakar. Uh, I'm sorry about this timing thing because you know we have to also uh, make more action points for panchayats. It's okay. Uh, so over to you, Rishabh, now uh, for uh, you know sharing the Rajasthan experience uh, about uh, how did uh, the the capacity building initiative and the terrain appropriate toilet technology initiative worked in Rajasthan and what are the lessons for panchayats, Rishabh. Um, thank you very much, uh, Raman, and uh, uh, I'll be sharing the Rajasthan experience with the participants here. Uh, thanks for uh, you know, uh, inviting me and sharing the Rajasthan experience here. I would request uh, um, organizer to kindly put up the presentation. Uh, Amulya, please. So uh, while the presentation is uh, being put up, uh, I would like to share the journey uh, of the sanitation uh, you no know, retrofitting, particularly in Rajasthan. Uh, so uh, this has been a journey initiated uh, from 2017, uh, where the first phase of ODF was ongoing and we found uh, from our field visits, the gaps on uh, toilet technology uh, you know, from our ground visits. And uh, this is where uh, about 30% of target of uh, ODF was still remaining and we initiated with our technology trainings uh, across the state uh, through the divisional level trainings. Uh, however, uh, if we can go to the next slide, so, however, uh, subsequently, when we, uh, the Rajasthan state was declared ODF in March 2018, one and a half years uh, prior to the 2019 uh, 2nd October timeline, uh, there was a recognition that there are gaps on ground, uh, there are challenges in terms of toilet uh, technology not being adequately used, uh, and uh, the government was fully on board when they initiated uh, this whole drive of initiating the work on uh, toilet retrofitting. Um, if you can uh, kindly go to the next slide, I'm unable to see the next slide. Amulya, there is some problem about uh, showing the next slide. So uh, it was uh, in 2018 that uh, UNICEF provided technical support in uh, taking forward uh, the retrofitting drive in Rajasthan. Um, okay, I'm able to see only the half slide, but I can use. Uh, okay, okay, fine. Okay, there is some issue. But, can you not uh, see the screen? I'm able to see, but it's only the it part screen. Here. It is fully visible here. Full slide oh. is visible, sir. Okay, okay. Then maybe I need to just give me a moment. Then I need. Okay, fine, no worries. So I'll, I'll just get started. So uh, um, so I would like to uh, go into this uh, whole idea of why retrofitting is very important, uh, the very session that we're discussing here. Uh, the very reason that the ODF gains that we have achieved across the nation will be lost because of the technology challenge. Uh, the QCI uh, survey of 2017 revealed that about 41% across India where single pit toilet needed uh, repeated emptying and unsafe disposal, uh, which kind of defeats the very purpose of ODF and uh, the very definition of it. Uh, hence, there is a need for course correction to be achieved uh, through ODFS and now uh, as a part of ODF plus. Uh, the appropriate technological intervention uh, is very much required. Um, and while this is true for Rajasthan, this is actually uh, applicable across all states in India. Um, so toilet technology, uh, the, one of the major reasons that we found uh, you know, from Rajasthan experience was either there was an oversimplification of uh, the entire movement. Uh, so the entire community approaches uh, that was followed uh, did wonderful in terms of you know, reaching to ground and communicating the messages on sanitation, but it missed out on the technical aspects or the technology aspects, or it was made over complicated. Uh, so uh, at the cutting edge level where masons uh, who primarily come either from, uh, so if I talk about Rajasthan and Southern Rajasthan, there are many masons who go to bigger cities like Ahmedabad and Bombay and who come back to their village uh, and they uh, try and uh, uh, promote that this twin pit is not going to work and you need to have a 
septic tank and when i say septic tank it is actually a concrete chamber so this was a kind of oversimplification to over complication which also led to technological gaps uh, there was also the inadequate uh, interpersonal communication uh, for motivating the households on twin, twin pit construction and highlighting the need of retrofitting. So this were some of the bases when we initiated the work in Rajasthan. And uh, there were, of course, some studies uh, across. So there was one study from CSE, which um, was uh, talking about the fecal slug disposal, about 78% was untreated. And uh, UNICEF, uh, when uh, Rajasthan was uh, achieving the ODF status, we had carried out a study in Dungarpur and Sirohi districts, which also highlighted some of the key gaps on toilet technology, which was the basis of the retrofitting initiative uh, and how we took the capacity building initiative at scale. So uh, moving to the next uh, slide, I'll uh, be sharing the, uh, the key steps that we followed uh, in this journey, uh, which initiated in 2017 um, and until last year, 2021, where we are. So first was about understanding the problem, which was uh, where we did the field immersion visits and we figured out what were the kind of challenges uh, that were existing. We initiated with a small uh, field demonstration in a, in a small district called Pratapgarh in a tribal part of Southern Rajasthan. And then Sirohi, where we also had an opportunity of uh, our former uh, uh, no, Mr. Paramayar, who had visited um, uh, Sirohi being the um, aspirational district, and he was on a field visit to see water and sanitation work, where we had a chance to demonstrate the toilet retrofitting work, and which I think also gave us a big push uh, at state level. Uh, following that, there was also an identification of what are the capacity gaps and what are the needs, So, and how should we structure our trainings? So this is where uh, the felt need was we have to go beyond uh, the classroom trainings and that's where a unique training uh, a content was devised where 75% of the focus of this training was on uh, um, on-field, on-site, hands-on and 25% was of course backing them with the, uh, the academic aspects and the key aspects of classroom. Uh, then. Uh, Following that, we felt that there is a need for developing resource material because there was no major material. So whom do we target? Where do we reach? And we found that the cutting edge level at grassroots uh, needs to be targeted. And that's where, uh, in coordination with Swachh Bharat Mission Director, the pocketbook was developed. The resources will be available by the organizers, um, which is a pictorial book in English and Hindi, step-by-step uh, -step construction and uh, the toilet retrofitting. And a training film was also developed. Subsequent to that, when uh, it was rolled out, uh, the training was carried out in batches and about 900 training uh, engineers were trained at one go in three batches uh, in smaller subgroups, uh, following which uh, there were directives which were issued to roll out some of the retrofitting initiative by government. However, having said this, there were challenges in its replication and scale up, which I will be coming later, but it did feed into how do we move forward from that point. So this uh, was basically from training to field. So it was not just a classroom training, it was not just a hands-on training, but how it rolls out on field. Subsequent to that, uh, there was also a proposal for a block saturation approach as a pilot, which uh, of course we were unable to take it forward for various uh, operational reasons and uh, the acceleration and other elements. But this was something that was proposed and also actively considered, yes. And uh, subsequently this transfer of learning happened uh, uh, in terms of uh, all this technology training uh, happened uh, with what was being shared, uh, shared earlier to other states. So West Bengal, uh, Chhattisgarh and Haryana were three states where uh, the learnings were shared and also the other platforms. So all these resources were shared through our resource person who's also with us here. And finally, um, there was a need for some reflection and course correction. And this is where ODF plus comes in. So the ground assessments are being done. Uh, NFHS 5 brought out some gaps and we further had followed up, the government of Rajasthan has followed up with an assessment of about 60,000 households where uh, technology has come up as one of the gap areas and some corrective actions have been charted. And uh, finally, uh, the integration with the ODF plus is where the way forward has been uh, looked at. I'm not getting into, this is uh, what I've already shared, so I'm not getting into details of what was done under each stage uh, in the next slide. But uh, what was really important was about, if you can go to the next slide, uh, Amulya, because I'm unable to see my slide. So um, what was really, uh, yeah, uh, just if you can go a slide before. Uh, yeah, so 
uh, this was what I've already mentioned about the retrofitting trainings, uh, how we have plowed our learnings from 2017 to 2019, and uh, how uh, you no know, we will be taking it forward, uh, the practical aspects and how the accountabilities were fixed by the government. So this was primarily the approach that we had followed for the trainings. Uh, and uh, I the, think I'd love to come yes. back to you, Richard. Uh, yes. So, uh, Raman, there's only last slide that I want to add, if you can allow me. Uh, yeah. Because so no time, so just show it. And sure, 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 sure. So these are some of the resource materials that uh, have been developed and which will be shared with uh, all of you. And uh, um, I have Raman, Dr. Das, but whenever there is a moment where he can share his insights, please uh, do feel I, free I, to I, bring I, him in. I, I'll bring him in later because, you know, now. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Rishabh. And uh, जो हिंदी की केवल समझते हैं कि हम लोगों ने दोस्त प्रदेश की ऐसी कहानी सुने जो बिहार और राजस्थान की अब हम जो है उड़ीसा की बात सुनेंगे वी विल हियर उड़ीसा जर्नी नाउ व्हिच इज अबाउट फिनेंसिंग यू नो हाउ पंचायत सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स एंड लोकल वुमेन टुगेदर कैन फिनेंस द रेट्रोफिटिंग प्रोसेस इज द लर्निंग फ्रॉम उड़ीसा ओवर टू यू नरेंद्र नाउ एंड प्लीज स्टिक टू द टाइम बिकॉज जो दैट इज समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड प्लीज फोकस ऑन द लर्निंग फॉर पंचायत ओवर टू यू नरेंद्र गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन सभी को नमस्कार आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट अमूल्या टू शेयर दिस स्लाइड प्लीज एंड इन फुल स्क्रीन मोड प्लीज so i am going to share the alternate watch financing experience and particularly how we are supporting the uh, retrofitting and uh, also uh, water upgrades and all through uh, watch credit financing using the odisha livelihood mission uh, women self help groups and it's a joint partnership of unicef water.org and uh, olm uh, next slide please so uh, basic objective is to uh, empower the women shgs to support the sustainable water and sanitation facilities at grassroots level and also uh, avail the better access and sustainable access in uh, not in the, not only in their houses but also in the community so uh, there are key stakeholders involved i have already mentioned about the odisha livelihood mission but the uh, district and block administration uh, team from swachh bharat mission uh, at district block and state and uh, bankers committee and uh, uh, committee cadres uh, of uh, entire program is involved for this as a key stakeholders and the program was initiated uh, from august 2021 and it is being implemented so it's in very initial stage but uh, uh, we have uh, got some results and uh, i'm going to share about that please uh, move on next slide so as already mentioned by the previous speakers so in sbm 2 uh, uh, there was uh, issue of uh, sustainability particularly of odf sustainability so odisha uh, had also con uh, constructed the over 60 lakh uh, household toilets in sbm 1 phase and and uh, that there was issue of single feet and also odisha is prone to cyclone and other disasters so there were issue of non functionality and uh, upgrade uh, is also needed for the toilet and water facilities and also we're looking at the current pandemic and all hand washing facilities need is also emerged so uh, there was a need of uh, seed money and how uh, uh, people can uh, adopt for all, for all these facilities by from their own pockets so uh, in sbm2 there was absence of additional financial support for retrofitting and uh, other upgrades so there is provision for new toilet uh, for, for the beneficiaries who have uh, who were left behind but uh, for retrofitting and other upgrades the additional finance support is not available so uh, and also the uh, if we see from the wash financing pr perspective so in a many uh, many alternative financing uh, uh, products the limited access is there for wash particularly for shgs and all so looking at these issues uh, we have uh, planned this initiative uh, please move to next slide and uh, in, in initial stage uh, we have covered the six districts of odisha uh, it represent the coastal uh, tribal and western uh, part of the odisha which have uh, different uh, geographical uh, terrains and challenges also so, and over uh, 60000 shgs are working and uh, addressing all such issues uh, next please so we have made uh, uh, 
expected outcomes of the project is to reaching the uh, 12,000 plus households in these uh, districts and, and uh, also uh, piloting some wash social enterprise models and uh, 50 for, uh, aware 50 percent of sg members and uh, provide a product uh, included in the uh, annual credit plan of the government and, and then scale it up uh, for the application next please uh, key interventions so far so uh, we have uh, uh, partnered with olm and uh, mainstream the wash uh, products in the regular uh, Community Investment Fund of GPLS through Odisha Livelihood Program Guidelines so that SSGs can uh, provide these facilities to women SG members and uh, they can use this fund for uh, retrofitting of toilet, toilet upgrade, new toilet construction, and also for the uh, uh, water-related activities. And then uh, capacity building uh, at uh, state level, uh, community cadres level, SSG level, on different aspects from the program aspect as well as the technical aspect through uh, Swachh Bharat mission uh, to uh, um, train medicine and other uh, functionaries on the retrofitting and other needs and uh, SBCC and monitoring is the uh, major component of this because demand generation is very important for this uh, although uh, demand is there but uh, taking loan for water and sanitation is uh, uh, very low so demand generation is a major part of this and uh, and we are also closely planning and uh, with the SBM and uh, OLM team for provisioning it in their regular budgeting uh, for and its upscaling. And uh, so far, uh, wash disbursement uh, is initiated in three or four districts, and it's in process. Uh, next, please. So we are about to uh, reach the time. Okay. Line. So uh, as far as CIF guidelines are there, so I would like to highlight the products included in that. So for water, uh, individual uh, uh, loan for individual connection, additional water connection, filter, retrofitting of water connection, bathroom and hand washing station can be taken, including rainwater harvesting. And for sanitation, it's available for the new toilet construction, retrofitting, uh, twin pit toilet uh, construction, uh, septic tank construction, soak pit, and uh, toilet for specially able people. So this is included at, uh, from the state level guidelines for OLM. And now uh, already I have mentioned, so we can move the to the next slide. So series of capacity building and field engagement activities are being done uh, to generate the demand. And uh, so far, uh, if we see the insights on the wash loan, so uh, approx 403 loans on sanitation uh, has been provided and out of which 340 uh, plus loans are on the toilet improvement and re retrofitting. And uh, it's uh, about the 35 lakhs or above. And it's range from the 4,000 to 10,000 rupees, uh, which is uh, provided through uh, CIF and uh, uh, vulnerability uh, VRF funds to SHGs. Uh, next, please. So these are some pictures uh, where uh, second pit is provided and new toilet are being constructed and it's new doors are being provided as part of toilet. Go into how panchayats can do this. Yes, yes. So... Uh, I would like to highlight that this uh, demand generation is more active than how we can use the Gram Sabha and other platform from Panchayat level that how uh, they can avail this facility uh, from the, the local self help group and Panchayat can uh, provide uh, uh, awareness on this. And further uh, in the Panchayat where this uh, uh, formula is not available, they can advocate for this with the district administration and uh, regularize this. So this I would like to highlight. Uh, next please. So on, uh, we are also focusing on the saturation-based approach like the ODF plus. So uh, here uh, we can see the World Toilet Celebration in uh, Neil Dungri village of Sambalpur. So entire village is uh, covered through the retrofitting uh, initiative and all the families, 100 plus families are there. They have, all have cons uh, repaired retrofit and uh, seven, eight families, those are, who are not having the toilets have also uh, constructed the toilet and Panchayat was also closely involved for this. So saturation approach is also needed to sustain the uh, ODF sustainability for this approach. So next, please. So I think uh, we are... Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, for uh, demand generation, public advocacy is very, very important. So whenever the wash uh, distribution is there, so uh, organizing uh, events at panchayat level, district level, block level is very important so that uh, people can know about this and avail the facility. Uh, thank you. All right.
so this is uh, you know something that uh, we need to understand how this financing so one of the uh, requirement for the session is about to know how panchayats can further uh, this kind of an initiative what they can do by uh, you know their local sgs and also at the district level whatever uh, financing uh, arrangement uh, you know could be uh, made for this is the key uh, information that we are looking for aapne suna ki kaise matlab swayam sahayata samuhon se matlab madad lete hue लोन लेते हुए लोग जो है रिट्रोफिटिंग और रिपेयर की बात कर सकते हैं अपने आप में और उसके लिए जो है किस तरीके से जो चीजों को उसमें शामिल किया जा सकता है किस तरीके से एप्लीकेशन किया जा सकता है उसकी कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग क्या होगा ये सब बातें इसमें हुई थी तो हम लोग अभी कुछ वीडियो देखेंगे जहाँ पे कुछ सरपंचों की भी बात हम सुन सकते हैं किसी मेसन की भी बात सुन सकते हैं कि उन्होंने कैसे इस पे काम किया होगा अमूल्य आप उस वीडियो पे जाएंगे Amulya, would you be putting up the video? Yes. Uh, एक बार मैं कोशिश करती हूँ बिकॉज लुक्स लाइक देर इज सम इशू अगर uh, उसकी कोई फिर से इशू होगा तो अभी विल पिक इट अपन दी एंड लेकिन अभी के लिए मैं एक बार कोशिश करूंगी ओके ओके क्या आप मेरे स्क्रीन को देख सकते हो दैट इज कमिंग ओके आवाज आ रही है मेरा नाम उषा साहू है मैं ग्राम पंचायत माटोड़ा मोदी की हूँ और मैं जन प्रतिनिधि हूँ जब हम लोग शौचालय बनवाए तो सभी के घर में सामान्य तरह के शौचालय बनवाए थे और हम लोगों ने गांव में सर्वे किया तो उसमें हमें एक दो परिवार में दिव्यांग व्यक्ति मिले जिसको सामान्य शौचालय में बैठने उठने में दिक्कत हो रही थी तो हम लोग उस व्यक्ति व्यक्तियों के घर में जा मिले और उनके परिवार को बताया कि दिव्यांग व्यक्ति के अनुरूप शौचालय बनवाने के लिए उनको समझाया लेकिन पहले में तो उन लोग नहीं माने कि इसमें बहुत खर्चा आएगा जगह की दिक्कत है ऐसा टाइप के लेकिन हम लोग ने उसे समझाया फिर उसको हमारे अनुरूप हमारे थ्रू बनवाया गया और अभी बच व्यक्ति दिव्यांग व्यक्ति उसमें अच्छे से उठ बैठ सकता है और जा भी रहा है और हम लोग उसको बीच बीच में जा अच्छे से निगरानी भी कर रहे हैं और उस व्यक्ति को भी अभी उस शौचालय में जाने में कोई परेशानी नहीं है धन्यवाद मोर नाम जीवन लाल पटेल है मैं ग्राम मानी व्रत हूँ और मैं पैर से फिर कलाम हूँ आज आप चले बार नहीं सब कुछ ज्यादा और मोर कर पहली छोटे वाला शौचालय रही से बहुत दूर में रही से और आज आप परेशानी बन रही थी तो अभी जो नया शौचालय बने हैं वो में मतलब पूरा सुविधा है लड़की बैठे पर सुविधा है नहाए पर सुविधा है हाथ वहाँ थोड़ा बहुत बहुत सुविधा है और घर के अंदर में है तो आ जा सकते हो आराम से है नमस्ते मेरा नाम मंजली नेताम है और ये मेरा पुत्र दीपांशु नेताम हमारे यहाँ का शौचालय का रास्ता पहले बहुत ही छोटा था अभी ये सामान्य शौचालय है इसमें हम लोग सभी लोग यूज करते थे जिससे दीपांशु को परेशानी होती थी उठने बैठने में अभी ये वाला शौचालय बनने के बाद दीपांशु इसको पकड़ के बैठ सकते हैं और इसको पकड़ के उठते हैं उसके बाद यहाँ पे शौचालय करने के बाद यहाँ पे हाथ साफ कर लेते हैं हम सब भी लोग करते हैं और यहाँ का रास्ता भी बहुत ही बड़ खा बड़ था जिसके वजह से दीपांशु चलने में परेशानी होती थी और अभी आसानी से चल लेता है और यहाँ सेंटेक्स लगा है जिससे हमें पानी की पर्याप्त व्यवस्था हो जाती है बिलाक जफरा जिला ललितपुर से बोल रहा हूँ 
जो गांव में शौचालय टूटे फूटे गेट में टूटे पड़े थे उनकी मरम्मत कराई गई पूरी और कुछ शौचालय स्कूल में भी पड़े थे विकलांग तो भी बनवाए गए और जो पंच भवन में शौचालय था अधूरा पड़ा था वो भी मरम्मत में बनवाया गया आगे की जानकारी राहुल बताएं और हमारे तो गांव में पहले जनरी कमीशन द्वारा मीटिंग हुई थी मीटिंग में पूरे गांव को ले आउट कर एक नक्शा बना हुआ अब नक्शा में देखे जाओ कि सब जगह घर हैं शौचालय हैं लेकिन कितना भी जो नहीं दिखे हो कि विकलांग शौचालय नहीं बने कितना तो प्रधान जी ने और आप जल जीवन मिशन के अंतर्गत जो जानकारी मिली उनसे प्रेरित हो गए और उन्होंने कहा प्रधान जी ने इस सरकारी यानी सार्वजनिक स्थानों पे पहले विकलांग शौचालय बनवाए गांव में मारौली में तीन स्कूल हैं तीन ही जगह पहले विकलांग शौचालय बनवाए जिनको काम नब्बे प्रतिशत पूर्ण हो चुके हैं बाकी अब कारगर है काम चल रहा है उनमें और 40 से 50 शौचालय ग्राम पंचायत में व्यक्तिगत बनवाए दे गए हैं और इनसे पहले जो कछु व्यक्तिगत शौचालय थे वे क्षतिग्रस्त थे उनको दरवाजों ने तो सीट टूटी थी तो उन्हें भी पूर्ण करा हुआ और फिर कछु नए शौचालय बनवा दे के लाने और भी आगे सूची में नाम भेजे गए हैं और गाँव में जो विकलांग और वृद्ध लोग हैं उनके लाने अलग से व्यक्तिगत शौचालय बनवा दी थी योजना पर काम कर रहे हैं वैसे गांव पंचायत में जिनको कछु लोगन को नाम सरकार योजना में भी करवा दिया हुआ है और जल जीवन मिशन द्वारा जितनी भी योजनाएं और उनसे जो प्राप्त में जानकारी हुई है तो प्रधान जी और आप लोगों के सहयोग से ग्राम पंचायत जो भी योजनाएं आएंगी उन्हें पूर्ण रूप से सार्थक करेंगे जय हिंद थैंक यू अमित जी uh amulya you want to also talk about the film from rajasthan and all that um yes uh, apologies maafi mangna chahti hu ye awaaz ke liye lekin hamari rajasthan ki unicef team abhi jab rishab ji ne baat kiya hai unhone hamare sath ek retrofitting jo kaam unhone kiya hai dry sanitary dry latrines jo unhone banaye hain उसके बारे में भी एक वीडियो है टाइम को उद्देश्य में रखते हुए हम अभी उसको प्रेजेंट नहीं कर पाएंगे लेकिन मैं उसकी लिंक और उसकी डिस्क्रिप्शन अभी चैट बॉक्स में डाल दूंगी और मेरी सभी से ये रिक्वेस्ट है कि आप एक बार उसको भी देख लीजिए थैंक यू उसी तरीके से अमूल्य जो रिट्रोफिटिंग के ऊपर हम लोगों ने जो वाटर में जो डिस्कस किए थे वो जो एक वीडियो है जो पंचायतों के लिए काफी उपयोगी हो सकते हैं उसका भी लिंक आप डाल दीजिए ताकि जो भी पंचायत से जुड़े हुए लोग यहाँ पे है तो वो भी इनको देख सकेंगे सो दैट यू नो वो uh, जो जो अनुभव से जो निकल के आता वो चीजें लोगों के काम में आए सो प्लीज शेयर द लिंक ऑफ द द वीडियो डिस्कशन दैट वी हैव आल्सो सो नाउ थैंक्स एंड आई एम नाउ गोइंग टू द पैनल सो वी हैव करंटली एकलव्य प्रसाद वीजी जी गोपीनाथन रूही लयर थ्री ऑफ देम हियर एंड आई विल ऑल्सो टेक Uh, mr das who could not be uh, you know talking during the he could not talk during the session to hum log uh, uh, or uh, we hope uh, uh, mr ajit tiwari will be joining us soon and uh, also uh, you know mr uh, <coughs> uh, parag choudhary will also be joining us i am not seeing them yet so let me start with eklavya uh, एकलव्या एमपीए है सपोर्टेड आपने तो बिहार की लोकल बॉडीज और वेस्ट बंगाल की लोकल बॉडीज के साथ भी काम किए हैं डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल पे काम किए हैं स्टेट्स पे काम किए हैं सो जो आपने जो काम किया था उसमें एक सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात यह था कि आपने क्लाइमेट रेसिलियंस को भी बात किए डिजास्टर रेसिलियंस की बात किए जहाँ पे बाढ़ हो सकता था वाटर लॉगिंग हो रहा था उन सारे जगहों पे आपने इकोसैन की सोल्यूशन को कस्टमाइज करके लोकली अडेप्ट करने में मदद किया था तो इसकी स्केलेबिलिटी क्या हो सकती है जो अभी हमने तीन मॉडल जो देखा था वो चाहे फिनेंसिंग मॉडल हमने उड़ीसा से देखा हो या बिहार की टॉयलेट क्लिनिक के अंदर हमने जो प्रोस्पेक्ट्स देखा हो या राजस्थान के जो देखे हैं वैसे और भी प्रदेशों के लिए इसमें क्या उपयोगिता हो सकती है और फ्रॉम लिसनिंग टू ऑल दिस व्हाट ऑल आर द की सजेशंस फॉर यू टू द पंचायत एक लेवे ओवर टू यू थैंक यू थैंक यू 
Raman ji for giving me this opportunity. I'm actually sitting in someone else's office. That's why my voice is slightly low. Okay, <laughs> right. A uh, couple of things that I would uh, start. I mean, I would mention at the outset itself. Uh, we've had uh, an amazing experience of implementing uh, SBM 1.0. Uh, the learnings, the outcomes, the learnings actually should be the guiding principles of the whole retrofitting, uh, you know, discussions that are going on. Uh, that's one, because it is it is actually going to help us contextualize retrofitting rather than make it extremely templated, and that is what my concern is. Uh, our entire work in Bihar uh, was largely, as you said, rightly said, was in the flood prone areas. So the first suggestion that I have uh, that we have actually practiced. So there are four suggestions that I would be making, all uh, coming from uh, our own experiences of the way we worked in these areas with regard to Faidaman Sochale Aka uh, ecological sanitation. The first is that you know before we started work, we had we always used to create a sanitation ecosystem framework. So this was this framework which we created, and that was our guiding principle. And what was uh, what constituted of the of this particular framework? First, people, water resource, and landscape. Second, we have we used to define accessibility, and then we used to work towards usability. It was just not access, and we used to be happy about it. The third point was identifying, innovating, and contextualizing contextualizing toilet infrastructure as per the scenario. So even if the technology was same, and we have worked on one particular technology, we have been promoting one technology for last almost about more than a decade. Now, despite that, even we have seen that there are differences in terms of the infrastructure that is required. And the last is that developing area-specific construction protocols, because that used to change. And all of these I'm kind of mentioning because the whole intention was to co-create functional, dependable, and sustainable individual household assets. So going by the experiences that we have garnered over the years, I would suggest that when we're talking about retrofitting, let's talk about you know, how we create an ecosystem of retrofitting so that we are able to address issues across diverse you know, settings. That's one. Second is, uh, you know, um, assuring sanitation services in a disaster prone and ecologically fragile uh, setup. It has to be and it must be seen and dealt separately. You just cannot afford to deal with it the way you're dealing with the rest of the programs. Therefore, in order to understand the, 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 the extent of proneness, to disasters of fr the fragile systems that are there, PRIs and the entire cadre there are the best uh, information providers. We cannot afford to go in. I mean, we can't do research and get the, the inputs. They are the ones who are supposed to be telling us. They are the ones who are supposed to, I mean, not supposed, sorry. I take back that word. They are the ones who are capable enough to tell us as to what exactly are the problems there. The third point, uh, while working in Bihar, we started off with an assumption that floods is a, uh, is a homogeneous identity, realizing very soon that there are diverse flood typologies. And it is, and it used to, I mean, one used to feel that how come this particular common sense did not occur to us or cross us when you were talking about flood typologies? Because all these flood typologies have different impact on assets, humans, life, health, et cetera, et cetera. So when we are talking about retrofitting, we have to overlay the whole exercise of retrofitting with regard to the diversity. And I would like to you know, bring in a figure here which will make you, uh, you know, uh, realize as to how, what we are dealing with. ODF, the state was declared ODF in 2019. Ever since that, 2019, 2020, 2021, Bihar has had floods. And the total, uh, I think the approximate households that were affected in these three years were 6.2 6 million. Some 
multiple times, some maybe once or twice. So we are looking at an impact of disasters in such a way that is retrofitting going to become the new norm? <laughs> yeah. You know, so that is the third point was where I talked about flood typologies and why it is important for us to, you know, look at it from a disaster perspective and then bring in sanitation issues there. Last uh, and not the least, you know, uh, we had conducted this exercise and I thought, you know, it has a lot of potential was the participatory assessment of the existing sanitation ecosystem. Uh, that used to be extremely helpful primarily because when we used to go around looking at the gaps, the problems, it was us who were, you know, getting the information, but in the whole process, a huge amount of, uh, you know, knowledge was getting generated. Now that knowledge actually helps in also getting converted into what can be done, what are the possibilities, what, what are the challenges which can be you know, easily uh, you know, addressed. For example, we, there were four point, uh, issues that we were able to address. One was we, we redefined sanitation works. So when we say, or anyone from Make Pine Abhiyan says that you know, we have done sanitation uh, five work, it is not that, we, we can, just cannot claim that. The sanitation was defined by people and then we moved in. Right. So redefining of sanitation works, and now I'm talking about retrofitting is, is one, this is this whole strategy of how we do a part, participatory assessment of the ecosystems. Second, cross capacity building. It really helps to undertaking this assessment. Third, identification of innovation. Now this is very critical. You know, if you go into the nuances, Maybe at the state level, people might not talk about these nuances, but then these are the nuances on which the entire foundation has to be, you know, has to, uh, you know, uh, get laid. The first point is that, you know, there are so many innovations that have occurred. Have we ever talked to those people who have brought in these innovations on their own without being triggered? Now, they are the thematic leaders. They are the ones who have understood the technology and have made something out of it so that it, it helps them in the future. And the last point of, I mean, uh, the, was in terms of innovating construction processes through local carders. I mean, we have heard of this so many times in, in, in at the grassroots that, you know, we are the ones who go and build uh, toilets and, I mean, uh, you know, uh, multiplexes and, and, and buildings in all the metropolitan cities. And so, so they are the people who are, you know, we are talking to them about how sh toilets should be constructed. So these are the four learnings which I thought if you are able to take it up and you know bring in the institution of PRIs with retrofitting, it will add a lot of value. Okay, I'll come back to you. For and, and just one line, Raman, just one line. I would, I would like to end and I eat and like to iterate also that you know, let us ensure that there are no further retrofitting of the retrofitted. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good that's a good uh, point no retrofitting of the retrofitted great over to uh, vg uh, uh, <clears throat> so uh, the kssp and the irtc have been uh, you know very seriously looking at the ecosystem of kerala uh, very uh, again, fragile again and found that the uh, you know as an early entrant to the sanitation row uh, much uh, before uh, the country has gone into the sanitation uh, Kerala has, uh, you know, uh, sporadic, uh, you know, number of uh, septic tanks which are not necessarily uh, correctly built. So there was uh, errors in there were errors in the issues and all that, and led to, uh, you know, again sporadic uh, uh, bacteriological contamination of the groundwater and uh, water bodies and all that. So the IRTC has uh, come up with alternatives, but you know, are the panchayats accepting it? Are, are there any specific problems about it? Is there any solution that you can offer to the North India, being a forerunner of the uh, sanitation history of India? Over to you, Vijay. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, thank you, 
uh, Raman and Waterhead and the, all the organizers of this program. Uh, and I am uh, uh, taking a few minutes based on my experience in Kerala. Uh, see, uh, Kerala is in a remarkable position of waste management, not based on a single project, but a holistic approach in waste management. Um, from organic uh, solid waste management to uh, this uh, skill development or training, etc. So in Kerala, 98% of the households are having latrines. So uh, retrofitting uh, 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 and uh, all other things are not relevant to Kerala. They are demolishing the latrines and taking new technologies and new fashions here. So we are going, IRTC especially, is going to uh, demolish the septic tank latrines to biogas plants. We are constructing, we are giving training, and we are also discussing with the Panjait Raj institutions about the possibility and about the two type of gains. One, disposal of the waste, and second one, uh, we are getting biogas from that. So it's a, um, uh, a combination of the uh, two or three uh, type of activities. Through one outlet, we can uh, uh, put the kitchen waste. And the on the other hand, we can put the animal waste. And also the latrine waste, it will go in another way. And from this biogas plants, the, all the houses, they will get enough gases and there is no foul smell or not any uh, bad smell or things. Uh, normally, they, uh, uh, they will use the gas. But one thing is a cultural uh, problem here because these gases are coming from the human excreta. So we have to give adequate training and propaganda measures to teach the people that technology is for treating all organic waste and gas or slurry or the compost, which are coming out of treating the uh, waste is a good product for our well-being. That's we are uh, giving uh, training and uh, lectures, uh, science literature, uh, science classes, discussions, etc. Panjaiti Raj institutions, they are 100% they are not ready to come with the uh, um, implementing the projects, but they are ready to go for that because they know that this is the major problem here. In Kerala, we are facing nine months rainy season here. Everywhere there is uh, two or three districts in Kerala are flooding and we are facing uh, frequently the uh, flood operations like, uh, like Orissa and Bihar. So uh, everywhere and the uh, culture of the people are uh, using the eatables with uh, more water content. So all the waste uh, uh, producing here, the water content or the moisture content is very high. So we have to uh, uh, implement the projects with uh, more technological innovations and technological inputs. Uh, so the uh, Panjait, uh, they know that this is the major problem and we have to tackle down. Otherwise, uh, the, in Surya Narayan's books, there is a wedding. Our three cities, Kochi, Kodikot, and Trivandrum, major cities in Kerala, are flooding our human excreta. Because everywhere there is uh, uh, latrines and the excreta is uh, coming out and it goes to the uh, public uh, drainage system or everywhere. So, so water contamination is uh, the main problem here. And we have achieved goals in uh, solid waste management. But 
liquid waste management is a problem in Kerala. So, uh, for that, we have done massive campaigns through uh, Harida Keralam and Sujita mission uh, programs. There are from from the points from or or the generating points one toilets bathrooms uh, wash areas drainage industries hospitals and there are six or seven uh, generating points then points we have to check out and do the 10% problem free activities that, that's the one problem the, on the other hand I'll, I'll come back to you, VG. Uh, you know, the, the second part of it, I'll come back to you. Amulya will be coming back to you. Uh, let oh. me go to, you know, the, the next part of it, because, you know, this part uh, was quite important. Now, oh. uh, you know, I'll uh, go to uh, Ruhil. Uh, Ruhil, uh, you know, uh, the Uttar Pradesh experience of uh, retrofitting is also quite important. And you have, uh, you know, collected and written the challenges and solutions for panchayats, uh, you know, in the form of a knowledge paper. Can you reflect on, uh, you know, how the Uttar Pradesh experience can be a learning, uh, you know, kind of trigger for rest of India, particularly in the panchayat context? Um, thank you, Raman and Amulya. Um, so a lot of what I was going to say has already been spoken about by Prabhakarji and also um, Eklavya ji. So what I will do is maybe bring in newer learnings that we haven't already spoken about before uh, to save time. Um, so one thing I'd like to flag, which we've touched on, is that retrofitting needs to be, uh, our concept should be more holistic. So it's not just about making defunct toilets functional or, and, and making converting toilets to become safely managed. It's also about making sure that they suit a diversity of needs. Um, so uh, older people, um, pregnant women, people with disabilities, visual impairments, um, all of these aspects contribute towards addressing people with different toilet needs. And it's crucial to ensure that there's sustained and safely managed sanitation for everyone. Um, so also that um, these needs change over time. So like Eklavya Prasadji already said, um, we've also found that retrofitting is an ongoing process. So um, there is a, there are it includes aspects of toilet maintenance within households by households, but then there's also a role of panchayats to come in and offer support where households are not are not able to address issues themselves. So retrofitting is an ongoing process. Needs of people change um, as people get older; their needs increase. Or, for example, women uh, when they become pregnant, they have newer needs. Um, so. Retrofitting is not a once uh, sort of intervention. It's 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 something that needs to be prioritized when it comes to when we when we when we're thinking about sanitation access and safe and comfortable sanitation access. Um, we also found that PRIs can take a leadership role um, towards maintaining and sustaining these wider sanitation outcomes through uh, incorporating retrofitting as a priority. Um, so, like uh, Iklavir Prasadji has already indicated, and also in Russia in his presentation, when it comes to training masons and training um, a local cadre of villagers and um, developing capacity within villages and using their own experiences to make sure that these feed into the ways in which people access sanitation. And so, the so retrofitting is always extremely localized, very contextually driven, and the perfect to really address needs of people within households because these needs differ from household to household. Um, because we sort of um, mobilized uh, a community, leave no one behind participatory approach, this really helped identify people both in terms of households and then also people within households who weren't able to access uh, safe and comfortable sanitation solutions. And then this was then put into um, flip charts and maps that color coded households that needed retrofitting and um, good that, and that need had different kinds of needs. So like um, Prabhakarji already said, this helped reconceptualize the concept of retrofitting where people didn't need a lot of monetary investment and could really just use um, 50, 100 rupees as low 
And these were really low hanging fruits where people could build handrails, people could cut holes in chairs and use that um, it, over their uh, toilet blocks. So all of these really localized, um, very low investment needing interventions, which also count as retrofitting. And then the visual maps that were actually created helped become a tool to um, encourage and motivate Port Panchayati Raj members to show that these are the households that need help. And these are the households that can be converted into safely managed households with very less um, investment. So it was always a visual reminder for Panchayati Raj members to really see um, um, households going from yellow to green when um, these um, retrofitting needs were um, addressed and households did have um, safely managed sanitation. One last thing I'd just like to add is that having Panchayati Raj members within Nigrani Samitis also really makes sure that um, this remains a priority. Um, so within Nigrani Samitis, when you have self-help group members or pancha Pani Panchayat members, to also include ward and Panchayati members within these Nigrani Samitis, make sure that these the, the Nigrani Samiti is both diverse, but also has people from governance and Panchayati level positions to include. And then the, the priority of sanitation and the priority of retrofitting doesn't really lose its importance and is it remains an ongoing process. Um, Thank that's you. that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, so uh, I need uh, you know there is uh, we are literally going out of time and also you know we need to address some of the questions. So Amulya, please uh, prepare your questions to each of the panel members, wherein we would require one minute each or something uh, you know uh, uh, response from all of them uh, for questions. But before that, let me go to Paragji. He has uh, you know I'm seeing him here. Uh, uh, I hope he is there. Uh, so, uh, say, आप से एक different question है कि uh, जो uh, कौन से ऐसी uh, जो technical uh, और uh, uh, capacity related, technical related और administrative arrangements करनी होगी जिससे कि पंचायत जो है वो retrofitting को uh, एक serious agenda में लेकर के वो कर पाएं. आज की तारीख में वो क्या-क्या परेशानी face कर रहे हैं? उसको sort out करने के लिए आप लोग राजस्थान में जो capacity building initiative की साथ साथ किस तरीके से उसको solve करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं पराग जी Thank you very much रमन जी Good afternoon to all uh, I will directly answer your question In our state राजस्थान we have started this uh, retrofitting movement uh, two years back when our state become ODF, and then we realized that uh, uh, the toilets which we uh, which we got in uh, in our uh, 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 society, uh, twenty nine percent toilets was uh, septic tanks, and then uh, the number number game was uh, going on to make toilet uh, by the pool. So. We have changed the septic tank pattern, but we are not able to change the uh, uh, septic tank to twin pit technology. So most of the people uh, constructed single pit. So in our state, QCI survey says that 57% is our single pit toilets. So now uh, in uh, ODF uh, and uh, then uh, LOLB and LOL. Uh, LOB and NOLB and now this uh, uh, goes continuous, uh, making of IHHN. So we have uh, constructed 1 crore 15 lakhs toilet in our state. Up, uh, I assume nearly 50% of the toilet are single pit toilets. So uh, our state issued uh, two years back the administrative order that uh, we will provide 4,500 rupees for retrofitting, not directly to the beneficiaries, but through gram panchayats. They will spend 4,500 rupees each for retrofitting. And uh, uh, we have uh, so far constructed uh, 1,80,000 uh, retrofitted toilets during that year. Now, Sorry, now uh, uh, the question is uh, very large in front of our state. 
in SBM 2.0, uh, retrofitting was initially not allowed. So we have uh, our our state has uh, initiated and written the uh, uh, written the problems <coughs> to the uh, SBM G officials, uh, DDWS, and then they have solved it. That uh, we have a assess from 15th Finance Commission. The the arrangement of financial uh, financial is uh, given from 15th Finance Commission. Right. Can you share that order also? That will be quite useful for other states. If they have written to you, yeah, I will. I, I will. I will share the order yeah. with Rishabh uh, Mamani sir. Yeah. Uh, all the estimates and all the all the uh, projects. Uh, then we have trained 900 uh, 900 uh, junior engineers. Yeah, JTA, yani junior technical assistants, uh, with the help of UNICEF, especially. Uh, das sir, TK Das helped us in, in uh, giving this technology to our state. And uh, after uh, 900 JTA JS, then they are uh, they will uh, they will uh, sign to make a further training of masons and PRIs and uh, beneficiaries in their uh, blocks at that time. Ten, nearly 10,000 uh, gram panchayats. Uh, were exist in our state. Uh, so at the end of the project, one lakh people we have trained in this retrofitting procedure. Retrofitting is not, not just for retrofit. It is a holistic view to uh, convert septic into fertilizer. It is a it is a uh, holistic view in our in our state that the septic collected in septic tanks, single pits should be converted to uh, to our uh, bio fertilizer so that we can utilize it for uh, just like a ordinary manure uh, like we use uh, other gober gober etc so uh, so it's a, a very common thing up now the situation uh, in our state is very critical as i told you 1 crore 15 lakhs toilets we have made and nearly 50% toilets needed to be retrofit. Right? Then 15 lakhs uh, toilets, if, we, if I calculate from 6,000 per retrofit fit, fitting, then it comes 3,000 crores. A huge volume, a huge amount. So uh, this amount can't be uh, matched with any any source, neither by SBM nor by FFC, nor by any other source. Now, what to do? I have a firm belief that uh, uh, all over uh, all over the India, in, including our state, we have not constructed the IHHR household items. The, the public, the beneficiary, have constructed the toilets. So, uh, just like this. If we are able to make a IC, if we be able to save a retrofit in the in front of Putin with the with the benefits of it, so we can uh, we can uh, we can mobilize our our uh, our, our uh, citizens and our stakeholders to convert single pit into double pit. All right. Let me let me stop you here because you know the, we we are uh, reaching the time limit. Only ten minutes left now. I'll now uh, you know uh, we, we, uh, Amulya will come back to you for that final thing. Amulya, over to you for questions and you know conclusion. I'll not be coming into the conclusion since we we don't have much time left. Amulya, over to you. Thank you so much, Raman, and sabhi ko bhot bhot shukriya. Um, so, we have heard a lot of diverse things, uh, you know, starting from presentations uh, from our UNICEF ki field offices, uh, Odisha, Bihar and Rajasthan, se, wahan se representatives have talked about their work and about their work and about their panelists, who have talked about their own experience, ke, uh, ke se, kya reflections hai unka abhi tak, ya phir, kaise aage jate huye, how do we ensure uh, sustainable sanitation we are retrofitting and as uh, Eklavya has said uh, you know how do we ensure that you know there is no retrofitting of the retrofitted so uh, uh, Dr. Tapandas ke paas, uh, uh, you know a question hai because uh, uh, 
पराग जी और ड्यूरिंग हिस्स प्रेजेंटेशन ऋषभ जी ने भी कहा है टेक्नोलॉजी के बारे में बिकॉज राजस्थान में आपने यू नो टेरेन अप्रोप्रिएट टेक्नोलॉजीज के बारे में आपने काम किया है एंड जैसे सभी पैनलिस्ट ने और हमारे प्रेजेंटर्स ने बताया है कि कॉन्टेक्चुअलाइजेशन कितना इम्पोर्टेंट है तो डॉक्टर तपन दास अगर इफ यू कैन जस्ट यू नो इन अ मिनट और टू इफ यू कैन जस्ट ब्रीफली टेल अस अबाउट व्हाट योर एक्सपीरियंस हैज बिन विथ रिगार्ड्स टू टेरेन अप्रोप्रिएट टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड वॉट आर योर रिफ्लेक्शन थैंक यू Are you muted? Yeah, yeah. Can you can you can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Actually, the 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 requirement of retrofitting, I mean, oh, as such, you know, uh, the 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 households which are using toilets, in the small ones and all, they they spontaneously do it them themselves. But the main uh, main aspect of retrofitting, which was stressed by Paragi told and other Rishabh be told, was in the context of you know the uh, the fecal sludge. Uh, accumulation and un unsafe disposal now in india it is 40% is single pit a uh, single pit toilet it is 80% in jnk uh, karnataka 92% like that you know various states the first thing which is required is a the state ownership for making retrofitting done otherwise if you have a you go for the fstb and all even with the the increasing cost of uh, the the fuel and all it, it, we are not sure that, that they will Uh, take 100 miles to 100 miles, you know, dispose of in a in a FSTP and all. So the best answer is sustainable is the 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 uh, the retrofitting. So while in Rajasthan and I we did training in uh, Haryana also, there are two different uh, the scenario geo geopolitical scenario. Uh, uh, the Rajasthan is mostly uh, the base challenge is the the farmers the, the household things that the the single pit toilet or double pit toilet it will fill up very easily with this. Uh, four feet or three feet deep, so they went for mostly, and they were also motivated by the far, by the mason for their own reason to make it very deep. I mean, very, I mean, their depth, ten feet, even two hundred feet, twenty feet, thirty feet. The main challenge was to not only to retrofit from single pit to double pit, it was simultaneously to reduce the existing pit also to four feet uh, within four feet, so that the fecal starch you know get decomposed because with appropriate temperature, and also. there is uh, most of the states even in rajasthan there is a you know uh, rajasthan specially there is a, a dearth of water in many 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 many, many of the uh, districts some districts many areas and all so there is a need also to uh, the uh, retrofit the uh, the uh, high water uh, requiring uh, the rural urban pan to rural pan urban pan requires about 10 liter of water per head per flush and uh, per use and it, it is 1.5 in The the in the in the uh, rural pan. So there was simultaneously that challenge was also to be met to uh, to co convert or retrofit the uh, the uh, the urban pan to rural pan so that the uh, it becomes you know climate resilient, less water is consumed, and then they go for using. Doctor, that's a very quick question. Hey, because we are very yeah. short of time. Yeah, yeah, uh, one yeah, of our yeah. audience question is that both our PRIs are very much interested, and this uh, oversimplification or overcomplication of retrofitting works could perhaps be lack of availability of resource material. So, if any PRI is interested, hey, so what are the different avenues through which they can, uh, you know, access knowledge materials? If you can just quickly let us know yeah. uh, about what are the yeah. different. The, uh, to meet up that that context, we have already prepared a very detailed step by step, you know, the video uh, we, when which I myself demonstrated. I am appearing there. That link has been provided. This can be given to anybody. And at the same time, look, you know, the uh, the easy to, easy to carry pocket booklet has been prepared, step by step, showing all uh, photographs. One is the pocket book, which can one the mason can carry, uh, and the sarpanch can carry, and the sarpanch can be, you know, this can be forwarded to any sarpanch. Rather, he can forward to all states. They in turn can give it to in the, in the, on their mobile. So the the visual itself is you don't require any further training. If they go through these things, is very making a. Uh, ma making a junction box yeah. and adding another pit yes. so it is all given in the, that video if we share the video to any sarpanch they can show in the uh, uh, panchayat and anybody can make it you know that one so right. it is thank you so yeah. much thank you so much dr das and uh, 
Uh, I would like to go to uh, Mr. Uh, Gopinathan uh, to just any uh, concluding remarks from your end, um, you know, with regards to how better we can, you know, moving forward, how better can, what efforts can be made to ensure that PRIs are more included in any sort of these processes. Any quick words from you, sir? Please. Okay, well, uh, uh, two points. Uh, what I am uh, uh, talking is, please convert these uh, latrines to biogas plants, one. Second, for that, we have to uh, train the people, train the people locally, locally uh, with the latest technology, illumination strategies, resources, raw materials, and all other things that we have to give them training. Make a team, implementing team. They will uh, construct the biogas plant and also they will do the servicing. Uh, for every rural technology options, maintenance is the main thing. So we have to stick on that. Third one, we must form a society, activity group or giant liability group or a labor society for running all these projects, which will support the PRIs. So don't overcome the PRIs. It will be a supporting institution to PRIs. If so, this will go on smoothly and uh, we can achieve the aim easily. That's it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And one final question uh, to either um, Eklavia or Ruhel, whoever wants to pick it up. Uh, if you could just share some anything from your reflections or anything that uh, you would like to share as to how better can PRIs ensure the participation of women and youth uh, in the decision making processes or the implementation processes. What are the different avenues wherein women and youth come into the picture? Eklavia, you're muted. Yeah, now better? Yeah. Okay, uh, a personal experience of while working uh, in Pashim Champaran, uh, Northwest Bihar, uh, in a village which is in Northern Block of the district, uh, where we were actually uh, trying to look at how we can generate finances uh, for the uh, individual household because our entire initiative there was led by women. Now, this is not a rhetoric. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that the entire initiative of constructing those Faidaman Shochales were led by women and therefore it was mandatory for us to ensure that, you know, how do we give them access to other government funds? Now, during that period, uh, the panchayat came as a big help for us in terms of pushing the whole process. Uh, we had a limited reach. Uh, we were strong at the district level or we had uh, you know, access to uh, at the state level. But then at the panchayat level to get the work done or the block level to get the work done, I think so that is where panchayat came in really strongly. And as I said, we were... Uh, you know, uh, this entire initiative, we ensured that it was led by women uh, because they were the ones who used to stay the longest in the village. Otherwise, men, all of them uh, used to migrate. So therefore, the need for them to be the uh, front runner. So that is how the link came in. And of course, uh, Jivika was there. So Jivika and uh, PRI, they already have uh, a kind of a network. But still, this was uh, the way in which we did it. Thank you so much. Uh, apologies, Sabiko, we are a minute uh, over our uh, stipulated time. So, Abhi, may quickly, uh, you know, I don't think there is any uh, need for uh, uh, concluding remarks as such, because Sari speakers, everybody who has spoken until now, everybody has reiterated that Jabi bhi hum retrofitting ya repairs ke baare mein baat kar rahe hai, it needs to be holistic. That that is a very key component, and that it's not a one model that fits all. Ye ek a ek design up banao aur ye sabi ke sabi jagahon pe implement karo. This is not uh, the the situation that works here. 
so how do we you know how how this is where the pri's come into the picture uh kyunki grassroots pe ultimately they are the ones who are implementing the work and also who have a better understanding of the reality of the things so why it ha- why and how it is extremely important for us to ensure the effective participation of prs iske sath sath unki capacities aur awareness kaise build kare is mamle mein taki jaise you know eklavya ne and sabhi ne multiple times kahe hai ki retrofitting ka yahi the importance is that जो भी मिस्टेक्स या फिर जो भी इश्यूज पहली बार छूट गए हैं उसको इसमें एड्रेस कर सके बट दिस इज नॉट अ प्रोसेस दैट नीड्स टू कंटिन्यू एंड री कंटिन्यू एंड एवरीथिंग हैविंग सेड दैट रेट्रोफिटिंग की अपॉर्चुनिटी पी के साथ हमेशा रहनी चाहिए ताकि वेन एवर देर इज अ न्यू टॉयलेट बींग कमिंग अप और एनीथिंग वेन एवर पीपल नीड द सपोर्ट उनके लिए कैसे पी की तरफ से क्या सपोर्ट हो सकती है इज वन की कॉम्पोनेंट दैट वी आल्सो अंडरस्टूड एंड आल्सो जैसे फाइनेंसिंग के बारे में हमने सुना है वाइल्स द एस बी एम एन एन सेल्फ डायरेक्टली डज नॉट हैव द फंडिंग अवेलेबिलिटी टूवर्ड्स रिपेयर एंड रेट्रोफिटिंग देर इज दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी फ्रॉम विद इन द फिफ्टींथ फाइनेंस कमीशन एंड जैसे राजस्थान में काम किए हैं वी कैन टेक दैट एज एन एग्जाम्पलरी मॉडल एंड अंडरटेक सच वर्क इन अदर स्टेट एज वेल and i would like to conclude and uh, thank each and every one of you all the panelists the presenters uh, for being and the audience for being here for taking your time to be here and for your questions uh, we wish we had more time but uh, hopefully we can all gather again soon thank you so much everyone and uh, stay safe we and have over people. 400 people attending thanks to everyone thank you so much everyone thank you so much to all the panelists and to the organizing committee for this wonderful opportunity to